What's going on with Chip Kelly, best you can tell me right now? Uh, right now, he is much in demand, kind of as we expected. Uh, on Sunday, University of Florida Brass, it was six, six members of their leadership, including the president of the school, as well as the AD, went to visit him in, uh, in New Hampshire. I, I was told the meeting, both sides felt like the meeting went well. Uh, so UCLA visited him in New Hampshire? No, Florida that's Florida. Okay. Now, okay. UCLA, I'm told the meeting, now it was reported uh, someplace else that it was in Los Angeles. I'm told it actually wasn't in Los Angeles, but he met with UCLA people there making their pitch. And we'll see how it goes. Um, you talk to a lot of people who either work with Chip Kelly or know him really well. They all think he is a better fit or fits more out here in Los Angeles. Uh, UCLA, obviously, as you alluded to earlier, uh, to, to pay 12 million plus to get rid of Jim Mora, you don't do that to go hire <laughs> Brian Harson from Boise State. You do that to go get Chip Kelly. And so the question is going to be, are, how committed are they to football and to, to the level of USC is way more committed to football and certainly a lot of these SEC, SEC schools are than UCLA. And what I mean by that is not necessarily, I really don't think that Chip Kelly is going to is gonna not choose UCLA or choose it whether they pay him an extra $300,000. What I think is the important part to him is the relationships he has with the people above him, but also are they going to do the things in, in sports performance and the athlete development pieces pay that assist, have been lacking? Pay assistance, yeah, too. Yeah, but also just the support part that goes into football and some of the programs around it. And I think that's, a, that's an important thing because he was really a pioneer in that. For all the talk about his offense and his run game, right? you know, when we do games uh, each week, you go around, you talk to college coaches, a lot of them have changed their practice schedule, what they do on Thursday as opposed to Fridays because of what Chip Kelly used to do. I mean, he's made that big of an imp imprint on how college programs are run, and it's beyond just the X and O. Now, I, I would think UCLA would um, uh, have had their seriousness indicated about football by by cutting a $12 million check just to be in the sweepstakes with Chip Kelly. That might be number one. And if you're going to spend that money, then then you got to throw more good money after after that. At least that would, that would that's to me. I'm also hearing, by the way, that, that – uh, Chip Kelly signing in college gets the Niners off the hook that they don't have to pay him. So he is not as cheap as you think. Well, that That's, would be different. That is what I, I am hearing. No, I hadn't heard that part of it. Yeah. I don't know that. Part I, of it. I'm hearing that there are some people in San Francisco that are, have their popcorn ready and champagnes to pop the minute he signs on a dotted line. For well, a if that's the job. case, you know, that they're going to be really, because he's going to end up somewhere. He's not going to stay in TV. Uh, you know, I think looking at this also from just a dynamic standpoint, he's not a guy who wants to be in the middle of a fishbowl. And that's what you would have had at Tennessee. To some degree, I think you have that at Florida, although not as much as some other SEC schools. Out here on the West Coast, you know, there's so many other things. Uh, people just, I think, are more conditioned. You know, when you're the head coach of an SEC program, you're like the most important person in the state. You know, if you're the head mm -hmm. coach at UCLA, you know, you're You might just, have been the most important guy on the campus. Yeah, I mean, I well, don't know. Because that's LeVar Ball, clearly. Obviously, you know, he's in the news all the time. But it's not even like, you know, people, whether you're Clay Helton or whoever, yeah. you know, it's a football coach. And I think it's also, you know, you go, you get to go about your business and do what you want. And I don't think there's as many of the entanglements that you have at some other programs. And I think that probably is appealing to him. Bruce Feldman here in the DirecTV 4K College Football Report. So who would Florida be looking at if not Kelly and, and vice versa, I guess? You know, my gut would say that they would turn to his protege, Scott Frost, who's at UCF, has done a terrific job there. When Scott Frost got there two years ago, they were a winless team, and they were at the bottom of the country in offense. Now they are 10-0. and They have the most explosive offense in the country, and that's less than two years. So he's done a fantastic job. He's got a lot of... Uh, developed a lot of recruiting ties. He can, he can also get speed there. And the question is, Scott Frost went to Nebraska... You know, that job is likely to come open. You know, I could see his heart being there, but is his head going to be there to want to go? Because you can get a lot better players in Gainesville, Florida, or in Tallahassee if that job comes open into Florida State than you certainly can at Nebraska. DirecTV 4K College Football Report. Check out, again, the DirecTV 4K College Football Game of the Week. And, oh, it's so incredible in 4K. Uh, Baylor actually even looks better in 4K. It's the only way you can watch Baylor, quite <laughs> frankly. Uh, taking on TCU uh, at 9-2. and two, Pretty big game for them. They don't want to be knocked off. Check out the 4K Ultra HD Game of the Week on Channel 106 this Friday at noon, right there in the middle of your holiday weekend. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.